Okay, hello everyone. I hope you're having nice and comfy remote seat at this year's special edition of the Goals Day Conference. My name is Julia. I work as a junior data scientist in the FCQR company as a proud member of the data science team, which my goal and mission is to uh, deliver data-driven and AI-driven solutions in order to protect our customers. So the presentation that I have for you today is going to be about the concept of the NLP toolbox that we have created uh, as a result of the Toro research on the common lines data. And we are going to try to answer the question whether we can model the common lines as an artificial language, starting from the complete scratch. So what is the data that we are going to work with in, in this presentation? The comment lines uh, that we are having at F-Secure are coming from the process creation. We are monitoring our clients' machines with our products. And as a result, every time the process is created, we are logging a new comment line that has triggered it. It can happen either when a user is typing a comment or when another process is spawning another one, or maybe when there is some scheduled task and so on. So as a result, we are having terabytes of samples of the comment lines every day of a pretty high diversity. So at this point, we are actually at the big data level and what we can tell about this kind of data is that it's surely textual following some rules because the common line interpreters know how to understand them. Why care about the common lines? They are the critical source of information when it comes to detecting and preventing the cyber attacks. If we could understand the common line in an automatic way, we would be really supporting what our experts are doing right now, they are investigating the comment lines manually when we suspect there is something really nasty happening on this machine. It turns out that if we want to define maliciousness or anomality of the comment lines, we can define the, those terms on different levels of understanding them depending on how deep we want actually to understand them. So here, if we only want to tell if the command line is looking weird, like is a sequence of digits or some special characters like in this form bomb, maybe we can do with some statistical counting of those sequences of characters and it's gonna be sufficient. But if we want to detect that the parameters of some executable are odd, like in this example, Notepad is really behaving in a weird way, we need to understand the syntax of the command line and not just see it as the sequence of the characters. And going even a level deeper, if we want to detect potentially malicious actions, like downloading a malicious payload in this case, or trying to hide intent redirecting some outputs to the files or maybe waiting a fixed amount of time like in this ping in the local host we need actually to understand the capabilities of a command line we need to know what they do which is another level of understanding that is the semantical level can we solve everything that i just showed you with one machine learning model i hope you will agree with me that we probably cannot tackle all of this with just one model, but we can try to approach this in a more generic way, assuming the comment lines were actually the sentences in some artificial CMD language. The idea is to create the NLP toolbox so that we are going to gather various natural language processing tools that are turned out to be really effective on the natural language in the recent years that will allow us to model the common lines in a similar way. And we're going to put all of these tools into one box, obtaining a generic solution for both current tasks 
and any other task that will come up to be solved in the future. So how the conceptual NLP toolbox is going to look like, we surely need the data to be stored somewhere in the box. We need some basic tools that we can work with, no matter the task, like embeddings, the tokenizers, some tools to assigning, to help us assigning the labels to the data if we want to label it. And in the bottom, let's say that we are going to define some tasks that will require taking down the tools out of the box, combining them and simply solving the task. What are the challenges that we're going to face? Well, I think you already see that with this great idea of creating a new language with its rules come pretty great challenges as well. And the number zero is we have no pre-trained models and no benchmark data sets for the common lines at all. All we have is the common lines and no labels. So what the word is actually gonna be in the common line language, it's so simple in the language that we speak, but in the common lines, it's not that trivial apart from this simple example. If we take a look at this word in listing uh, the directory and sorting files by name, maybe we would like to actually split it by the column because we are choosing some option and of the ordering and we are assigning some value to tell that we want to sort by the name. So maybe split it. And we can also see here some redirection operators that we probably want to keep separate from the name of the file. And if we just go a bit deeper to the common lines that we have, you can see that some words seem to be pretty long, like in this case, passing another common line to the CMD. And it looks like it contains of more than the 10 smaller words in the one word and close in quotes. And assuming we can tackle the problem of defining a word, what the parts of speech are actually gonna be, we would like some loose relation to the parts of speech in English. And we also want to stay at the level of some very basic entities. So like the comment for the X copy, uh, the entity that is doing something, the parameters that are going to be taken by the comment and maybe some options telling us how to do it, but we can already see that it's not the it's not the first token that will be a comment because the comments are going to be executed in some contexts, like here with the special privileges. Is it going to be another comment or is it going to be a parameter of execution of the first one? Sometimes you can just see that the data is noised with some other languages that is also going to require some special part of speech, I suppose. And e taking a look at the real life example of the Java, if you try to read it all, you can find that there are some function names telling us, uh, telling the Java to execute this function with some parameters. So maybe we want another tag for this so that we don't lose track on these crucial elements of the command line when it comes to preventing the attacks. So how can we tackle all these really hard questions? Let's say we just, we are going to simply sample some command lines, manually review them and just define the words and define the parts of speech so that we are satisfied enough and let's hope we will have the sufficient coverage. What are the risks? Well, we, if we have this big data volume of the common lines and we just take a sample, not bearing in mind, it's not gonna be a uniform sample at all. We're just going to see only a tip of an iceberg here. So we definitely cannot just take a sample from the storage of the common lines that we have, we're going to draw some biased and probably to simple decisions. Trust me, we act this is what actually, this is what we actually did. So can we solve it in some way? So can we obtain some heuristics of 
telling if the command line is repeating too much and is too similar. It turns out uh, that we can possibly solve it with some simple unsupervised algorithms. And as a result, we came out with some uh, command lines clustering uh, solution that enabled us to sample a data set that is small, but is more representative than just the naive sample. So in order to bring this solution, we actually uh, had to start with the embeddings and the tokenizers with the unsupervised uh, methods that were really easy to use, even though no labels exist and we don't even know the data yet. So first of all, uh, we don't know what the word is, but we still can use some tokenizer, which is a byte per encoding uh, algorithm that used to be a simple data compression algorithm and is currently widely used in the NLP that will uh, enable us to discover some frequent subwords in the textual data that we will input into the model. I will show you the example and everything uh, will be much clearer. So we used 5 million of common line samples, sounds more representative than just a few thousands of them. And we obtained 100 thousands of the special subwords. You can see the example of the subwords here uh, over the trained model of the BPE. We just input this kind of a comment and you can see uh, all the subwords that it is split into in three columns because I had to wrap it. And you can see that the first subword, for example, is such a frequent sequence of characters that the BPE has decided to keep it as a single unique subword. By the way, using this uh, algorithm, you can, uh, you can be sure that there will be no out of vocabulary errors uh, because it will just make sure that every word can be created using those subwords. Once we have those subwords, we simply trained a word to back embeddings algorithm and uh, we obtained the numerical vector representations for each of the words uh, that the BPE has discovered. So for example, for the Python, we obtain a vector and we can further query the work to vec model for the most, most similar ones. And I assume here that you kind of know what the embeddings are. The vector that we get is the representation of the concept of a word in some multi-dimensional uh, space. So once we have trained the uh, embeddings and the tokenizer before, let's just put it into some simple pipeline that will take uh, the subwords from the split command line, query, uh, query the embeddings model for the sufficient uh, vectors, and then we can sum it up to obtain the summary embedding for each of the command line that we have. So for example, inputting this simple command, pinging the Go State website, we just obtained one uh, summary embedding of the fixed size. This will, this will enable us to represent every command line with some nice vector. And this means we can apply some clustering over that. It might seem uh, pretty tricky, but it really worked. We just sampled 200,000 of the command lines calculated the summary embeddings of them, just like we would do for the documents uh, in some NLP tasks, created the cosine similarity matrix, and we run the DB scan over, those, uh, over this matrix so that we obtain the arbitrary number of clusters. We didn't know how much uh, it's going to be, and uh, also the isolated points. I have visualized, visualized a few of the clusters in this, uh, in this simple graph. And if we take a closer look at one of the cluster colored with a unique color, uh, you can see that this is a cluster of some Firefox executables being called with 
some kind of a similar set of parameters, but uh, they are slightly different than calculating the, the distance in, in the number of the characters that differ would be a really too much tedious work. And actually this approximation with the algorithms turned out to be enough. So what we can do, uh, we can just make sure if we want to obtain the representative data set, make sure we don't take more than 10 representatives of each cluster. And to make things even more fancy, let's just keep the isolated points as the final test set, as the unseen data to maximize, uh, to maximize the chance that this, those are really gonna be the common lines not seen before. So now we have, uh, how do we obtain the data set? Let's just fill up the NLP toolbox with some first tools, the embeddings and the tokenizers. By the way, we have solved some pretty useful tasks, the common lines clustering uh, by inputting those two and we can withdraw a nice and small data set <coughs> so that we can review this and we can proceed with those definitions uh, of words and the post tags for the sequence labeling model because we still want to take the common lines to another level of understanding. So it was an iterative process to define what a word is and what are the parts of speech. We have decided to try to resemble the CMD art parser as much as we can for the tokenizer, which is a deterministic one, no machine learning here included. And we kept on iterating uh, with improving it as well as with the post tags as long as we have decided that this is sufficient enough and we will cover most of the cases that are interesting to us. So in the meantime, we had to prepare some annotation tools because if you want the model to learn how to tag the sequence with the parts of speech, we need to input some labeled data. So this is how our work looked like it took us quite a long hours of annotating, but we finally did it. Uh, and what we had to do, uh, we had already the words split by the new line, and we were simply selecting the tags uh, that are correct in our opinion. Like in this example, we introduced some more tags like the sub comment. So we still don't know how to solve the sequence labeling because we focused on preparing the data set. And you can probably see that the tools that we already have are not really compatible with the sequence labeling task because the CMDR parser tokenizer is different than the BBE. So we have to choose the sequence labeling model and we wanted to apply one of the state of the art solutions. So we chose Flare because it's full of one-liners, it's really easy to use and it's claimed to be faster than other state of the art models. It is a framework and Flare is also the name of the embedding, so don't be confused about that. The authors are proposing the special kind of embeddings that are character level. They are also context aware, contrary to the word to vec uh, embeddings. And they are actually obtained as the hidden states of the bidirectional LSTM in the neural network, which is learning the language model. We will see in a second why it's so useful in our case. This is basically how the model is working. We input uh, the sentence character by the character, and we just query the hidden states in the right uh, moment to obtain the embeddings uh, for, the, for the particular word in the particular uh, sequence. Like in this case, Washington in this uh, George Washington was born uh, sentence. And due to the bidirectional, we actually obtain one forward and one backward embedding for this word. What's really cool about those embeddings is that we need no tokenization or special characters definition here, 
we just inputted character by the character and it's still it is still proven to really produce uh, meaningful results. We train the language model on our data for like around entire day on some GPU instance. And it turned out that the model is able to generate some artificial command lines like those two examples. So let's just add another tool to, to the NLP toolbox. We have new embeddings now and another task solved as a side effect, which is the generation of the command lines. And we still need to select the sequence labeling model, which in this case is going to be Flare again, another bidirectional LSTM network with the CRF, conditional random fields layer, uh, sequence labeling architecture, which is considered to be pretty simple and not a deep architecture. It takes sequence of words as input and the sequence of tags as an output. What also the player is offering and what we decided to use is stacking the embeddings because we need to represent the words somehow as numbers. And we have two kinds of embeddings so far. We have player and we have this word to vec embeddings. So having a word like this, let's stack those two embeddings that we have. We have I've just showed you how player is going to work. We need to query the word with the entire context given for the word. And for the word to vec, we need some more work because we trained it over the subwords. So we just split it into them. Once we obtain them, we just need to calculate the sum. And we were inspired in this case by another embeddings called the byte pair embeddings. So we actually concatenate here the first embedding, the last one, and the sum. And as a result, we obtain one embedding which is really, really long. We did this not only to benefit from all that we have, but also because the authors of the, of the Flare framework claim to also achieve better results when combining Flare embeddings with some pre-trained globe. So we just did the same, but for our CMD language. So for now, we just have input all of, uh, all of these tools into this really big and challenging task of the sequence labeling. Let's move on quickly to, to some brief overview on, of the results that we have obtained because the data sets that we uh, managed to label were pretty small. We did some cross validation and the hyper parameter search, the number of faults were four and we finally uh, selected the LSTM size of 128. And we made sure that our word to vec embeddings stacked with the flare are beneficial by testing multiple combinations of them. So we obtained pretty nice results. We were really happy with them because the task is really challenging and uh, the data set is really small. And also the test set that we created turned out to be really difficult. And I believe it was truly unseen and we obtained the F1 macro score around 91%. And the accuracy obviously was, uh, was a bit higher because the distribution of the tags is not, is not very even. Some of them are, uh, are more rare and harder to detect. You can see that the model struggled with uh, detecting script, which is an entity of another language, or for example, struggled a bit with the flag, uh, with flag value because it's really tricky. Sometimes there is no uh, separator uh, between the option and the value assigned to it. We uh, compared the results with some baseline CRF that we started with a long time ago, one year ago, uh, and we have uh, observed a more than 5% uh, increase uh, on the weighted average and the significant uh, increase on the 
macro F1 uh, average. So it was definitely worth the effort uh, to, to use this deep learning model. So looking at the confusion matrix, we have observed some errors that we could expect. As I told you, some of the tags are definitely harder and it's even hard for us to guess or hard to uh, assign the labels uh, to it. And the model, of course, uh, has some struggles with this. And just a few examples of how it works at the end. We have this word split on the left and the assigned tags on the right. So some of the correctly labeled sentences look just like this. One correctly tagged uh, git comment. And here you can see correctly recognized uh, comment script, which is another comment line in the comment line. And some wrong label, uh, a mistake in this case is probably because the model thought uh, something is ending with an exit, so it's going to be unexecutable, the comment, but it was actually the parameter for the robocopy. And that's it, that's all that we have for now in the NLP toolbox. Unfortunately, we're running out of time. I hope you like the idea that we have of building the generic solution that is going to solve many different tasks. Uh, and I hope that I convinced you at least a little bit that it is possible and worth the effort trying to model the command lines as the artificial language. There are many steps uh, to take uh, further, either combining the tasks together or the tools together. I would be happy to tell you more about them if, if I had a little bit more time. And for now, Thank you very much for your attention and I'm looking forward for your questions and some feedback. Cool. And we have Julia here with us. Uh, hi, Julia. Hello, uh, hello. Hi, hi. Okay. Um, yes, we are we very liked, we very much liked the the the, um, the idea you, you presented. Um, Okay, thanks for attending the conference. I think the presentation was very comprehensive, clear, and well well written. And this the best slide was of course the one with pinging Ghost Day website. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, like careful, <laughs> careful watchers. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, Dariusz Brzezinski, our moderator of the first keynote, um, is asking. Um, Following the NLP analogy, can you consider the problem as similar to sentiment analysis with words, comments indicating some level of sentiment, maliciousness? Uh, that's a really uh, interesting question. And I'm afraid the answer may get really, really broad uh, in this case. So basically, it would be it would be really great if we had such a mapping from the current sentiment analysis solutions where we can just input some comment from some website or some review into the model and we are actually getting the answer whether it's a criticism or it's a positive review so if we had the same answer for whether the comment line is malicious it would be really perfect but uh, i believe uh, you might suspect it's not that simple in terms of the cybersecurity context. There are many, many things to consider. Well, f first of all, if you look at just a single comment without the context of what has been happening on the same computer within some like time interval, I don't know, of minutes or maybe even some days, you cannot really tell from just a single comment line if it's going to be malicious, maybe you can detect some obvious cases, but this is not what we are actually looking for. Uh, as a data science team, we want to discover something new because as I already said, our experts uh, are always uh, reviewing uh, the incidents themselves. We are not, uh, we are not delivering the actual automated answer that the client will, will just receive. And the reason for that uh, is the need to reduce the amount of false uh, positives 
in uh, in the predicted samples that we are going to with the predictions that we're gonna do with with such model. So this is another really important thing to consider. And the risk of those uh, false positives, I suppose, would be quite high in case of simple mapping the sentiment sentiment uh, analysis. Uh, and another another really tough uh, thing to do if we want to do this mapping is the sparsity of the malicious uh, examples compared to the to the benign ones. So common lines are probably different to like reviews or comments from the websites. Because if we look for the malicious comment line, it's like looking for uh, the needle in a high stack. So the proportion is definitely different. And this is basically this is basically the reason we would rather uh, build up the tool like this NLP toolbox instead of one black, black box model to rule them all and just tell, oh, we think this is malicious. We cannot tell you exactly why, but we put it into the network. And now it answers that, well, this is something bad. Uh, if, we, if we build some more manual tools, but they are still AI driven, uh, then then we can um, in, increase the the chance of actually cooperating with the experts and actually help uh, in their work. So, okay, I hope this, uh, this answers the question at least uh, a little bit. It's it's much more complicated, and uh, also the domain of cybersecurity makes it really different. I think. Okay. Cool. Cool. Uh, okay, another question from Darius. Uh, can you extend the model with some custom rules? Can parsing or regex uh, help correct some of the mistakes? Um, well, at some point, of course, uh, we can be defining the custom rules at the very end. Uh, we, we did something kind of inverse here because we wanted to speed up our annotation effort we did uh, with the CMD uh, samples, and we kind of started with the automate automated uh, tagger with with the rules like that. With uh, if something is starting with a special character and so on and so on, uh, and this has really speed up uh, the annotation. But we didn't yet. Uh, extend the output model with the with the rules okay okay uh thank you Julia. thanks for being here with us today um okay see you on at the conference thanks thank you too thank you Bye.